Uh, welcome to our weekly Q&A call. Uh, a week and a half ago, my longtime buddy, Mr. Walt Mann, who created the Zono Sanitech cabinet, uh, who's an incredible inventor and just a great human, uh, who's one of our original also summit sponsors back in 2012. And we have a long st standing friendship, myself and his wife and Teresa and just great people. Uh, he reached out to me to let me know that there's um, an incredible opportunity and program for uh, our members to get uh, funding to um, be able to, to afford and fund their Zono um, sanitization cabinet uh, service in their schools. And for clients that have this, you guys can shout out in the chat what a game changer it is for your organizations to be able to um, put everything in your school, especially during the, what we've lived through for the last 15 months, to put everything in your school from cots to crayons, to stuffed animals, to everything, books, into a cabinet and have it be 99.99% um, uh, sanitized without having to use bleach. So it's an incredible service and it's an incredible opportunity. And the folks from Zona are here today, Myron and friends to give us the update on how we might be able to uh, secure a, um, an amazing system here for our schools through some funding opportunities. So with that, uh, take it away, friends. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that introduction. We're delighted to be a part of this call today with the uh, Child Care Success Academy. And, and like, like Chris, we are devoted to the child care industry ourselves. That's primarily who we serve. And we are experts around sanitation and disinfection. And we do a lot of research about things that affect you and, and, and your business model. So we have a number of things to share today, but frankly, this could be the most important heads up that you're gonna get about the financial aspects of your business today. So I think, I think you'll find this exciting. So the, the primary thing we wanted to introduce to you is the American Rescue Plan Act. And this was, this was actually signed into law by President Biden March 10 of this year. This is a, a new item and it has a significant portion of the funding devoted to childcare. And this is different from the CARES Act. The CARES Act, in many cases, had funding available, but with, with requirements for repayment, uh, or certainly requirements to be met to avoid repayment. The difference with an important distinction with the American Rescue Plan Act for child care is we're talking about grants. And we're talking about this being available to, to you for a nonprofit and a for-profit business. So it's, it's about COVID and about helping you and many of your colleagues get back on your feet as a, as a business enterprise. And let's face it, the probably the toughest industry that was affected by the, the COVID-19 was childcare. And actually child care is a linchpin for the, the prosperity of, of our economy. So I actually think this, this bill is, uh, is a really important item to help us for our financial vitality. And frankly, for a lot of you, uh, for your business, for your prosperity uh, as, we, as we move forward. So the American Rescue Plan for child care consists of two things that are really important. So let's just go over those. The, the first one is $15 billion that will be available for block grants, okay? And then $24 billion for the uh, stabilization of our businesses for child cares. 
So these are two different separate things of funding. It's important to note that, you know, this is being devoted to states, to the territories and to tribes, but it is not going to uh, support Head Start, okay? So this is for you. So the, the $15 billion, you can, you can apply through your state for funds that will do things to help you boost enrollment for your childcare facility. And this is funding that's around defraying the expenses for essential workers. And you can see down at the bottom of the screen who, who is defined as essential workers. They're, they're uh, healthcare sector employees, doctors, nurses, hospital employees, clinic employees, emergency responders, sanitation workers, and then some states are probably going to have food uh, service workers and so on like that categorized in the, the essential workers category. The funds are to be obligated to you all by the end of the fiscal year in 2023. And those funds have to be exhaustively spent by the end of the fiscal year, June. Uh, September 30th, 2024. So I have a, a note here about boosting your employment. So if, if you're looking to, to bring your enrollment back up to the, the uh, level that you are authorized for, it would certainly seem like it would be logical for you to, uh, to go to uh, funding with your state to obtain this. So I'm going to segue now to the, the next stream of funds that we have, the grant funds. And this is for stabilization of your businesses, okay? And among the things, and this is a copy from the law that's down at the bottom, for child care providers to reopen or stay open, so to provide a safe and healthy learning environment, keeping workers on the payroll, and provide mental health support for educators and children. So among the things that are mentioned that can be funded from the stabilization funds are rent and mortgage, our PPE items, uh, COVID response items, and then things that will, will help you maintain your, your uh, staffing. So you can, you can, you can pay bonuses, you can pay recruiting costs to, uh, to hire people. And let's face it, that is a tough part of the equation right now in the, uh, the childcare business. And then for mental health and, and support for, uh, for children and staff. Uh, so there are a lot of, lot of areas for funding. Now, we should add that all of this is being administered by the states, okay? So the states can make up rules as they please. So what we're talking to you about and quoting today are the things related to the, the uh, uh, act itself. How the states interpret this is, is probably going to be up to them to make some kind of uh, judgments about how funds are used. So just to give you a feel for the amount of funding that we're talking about, we just copied down the first eight or nine states, and we show for the block grant money, which is the money for the uh, essential workers, and this is to defray the expenses or partial expenses, the states will make the determination of how much of that is, is going to be partially or wholly funded for, uh, for essential workers. But you can see that, that uh, Florida's got almost a billion dollars uh, in, in this, and California's got almost a billion and a half in block grant funding, okay? For stabilization grants, and this is what we we're talking about with respect to salaries, rent, mortgage, uh, insurance, upkeep for your facility, for sanitization uh, mechanisms like a, like a zone of, for example, we're talking about for California, 2.3 billion billion dollars 
of, uh, of funding. So for all the states, there's, there's quite a lot of money. Um, and you'll see the, the uh, QR code, scan that, just open your, uh, open your phone to the uh, camera and scan, scan that and you can reach out to us and we will, we will send you information about your state. So when you, when you, uh, you can click on the, uh, uh, the clickable zonotechnologies.com down at the bottom too, if you, if you can't scan this in the time that I'm leaving it on the screen. And we will follow up and send you a link to what your state has set up for provisions. And we'll tell you how much funding is in block grant and stabilization grant. And we will, we will send you what they have. Now, we have a couple of people that are certified grant writers and analysts that are working with us because we deeply research everything and try to deal with just facts. And what we're finding is, even though this has been in effect since the 1st of March, not many of the states have anything out there yet about the, uh, the funding and the provisions to make an application. So stay tuned with us. As this gets updated, we will update uh, the link. So if you've reached out to us, we will proactively push that information out to you. States like Oregon and Connecticut are already well into this. Uh, I noticed that the state of, of Texas still has uh, $790 million of CARES funding that's available. And they say that they're going to proactively reach out to you if you're in Texas and 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 notify you about funding. We're working with, with one customer in Texas right now that said uh, no one reached out to, uh, to him, but he proactively contacted them and made an application and it looks like it will be, be fruitful. So we will, we will follow up with you if you connect in with us, okay? So I think it's, I think it's important for you to uh, understand how big a deal this whole thing is for sanitization and, and for health and safety and so on. And, and one, of the, one of the things that I ran across in the last few days that I want to tell you about is something that was published in Rational Ground. Rational Ground is a, uh, is a health um, healthcare blog. And they wrote up about a study that was done by Florida's Mass Spectrometry and Research Education Center. They analyzed uh, six masks from five students and one teacher that had worn these masks for one day in a classroom. And parents wanted to know, well, what kind of pathogens are on these masks? So the, the tests that the University of Florida ran this past month yielded astonishing results. And let me just mention this to you because this, this speaks to the fact of just how we are with, with one another and passing things on. Here are the uh, infections that they found in those six masks that they examined. Pneumonia, tuberculosis, meningitis, uh, encephalitis, food poisoning, Lyme disease, diphtheria, Legionnaire's disease, meningitis, so those, those were the elements that were found on just six masks that were examined. Now, I know three of them were surgical masks. This is a good indication of just what it is that's going on uh, be between us. Now, this is not a scientific study. This is, this is, only, this is only something that is, gives us anecdotal information, but it lets us know how important it is for us to do disinfection uh, in our facilities and, 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 and really care about the, the healthcare aspects of, of this. So we know that there's not, a, there's not a single solution for having a healthy, sanitized childcare uh, facility, but we're researchers and we, we check things out and, and we try to make sure that there are, are verified solutions for, for things that we, we mentioned to you and talk about because that's who we are, and that's really what we do as, as Zono. We have things that are certified results. So 
I'm mentioning to you a three-step solution for your, your business for sanitization and disinfection. And I, I've already talked about Zono and the fact that we have, we have uh, verified results. Another thing I want to point out to you in terms of verifying technologies. So on air supply, um, you know, having fresh air is so important. And we, th we think, it, and as a matter of fact, the recommendations are for you to bring as much fresh air as you can into your facility, as long as your, your heating and ventilation system can treat that air, it is adequately warm and adequately cool for comfort, but it gives purity for everyone in your building if you have treated air. I wanna mention the MERV 13 filter above. This is a high recommendation by the experts. So if you have, if you have a HVAC supplier that's working with you, plan to, plan to have the MERV 13 or higher if your system can accommodate a filter that, that is, is that filtering. Or if you can possibly go to a HEPA filter, then that even that would be more preferable, but a lot of air systems cannot tolerate the amount of filtration that a, that a HEPA, system, HEPA filter uh, requires. But just to give you an order of magnitude, uh, if you were able to have a HEPA filter or HEPA filters uh, interceding in your air supply system, you're going to capture 99.7% of pollen and mold and, and, and bacteria that come into your facility that's 0.3 micron size and larger. And 0.3 micron is very, very small. And this is something that will help asthmatic children too. If you, uh, if you have a MERV-13 filter, then you will capture about 75% of, uh, of those, those pollutants that are in, the, in, in your building. One of the things that I want to point out to you is, is, you know, there's not one solution. And some folks have talked to us and said, well, we're just going to use uh, air purification for our facility. And we're not going to worry about putting these higher level filters in and so on like that. We're going to put these purifiers. And sometimes they are space uh, type items, and sometimes they are employed in the in the ducts themselves. But one thing about those uh, is very often they are advertised to emit things that kill COVID-19. And be very careful about something that is emitted into your space. Uh, very often these things are tested in a very small box, and they came up with the performance criteria around viruses and bacteria that they kill that is not really applicable to being applied out into a 6,000 or 8,000 or 12,000 square foot facility uh, like you might have. And I'll tell you just how ridiculous some of this testing is. There's six air changes per minute. You can't possibly change six air changes in your whole space in, in a minute. So the the, the criteria that they have tested under is not very applicable in most cases to facilities like yours. Uh, one of the other things that I would point out to you about them too is, is noise. Uh, we have talked to, uh, to folks at childcare facilities that have bought those and have them in each room. And unfortunately you have to turn them down on a very low level so they don't they don't create very good efficacy uh, because they're loud. And the, the WHO, uh, World Health Organization, recommends 35 decibels of, of noise as an ideal not to exceed level for a classroom. Uh, a lot of these machines, when you operate them at a high level, are more than twice that level, certainly above the 60s in decibels. You can't talk to children uh, if you have noise that loud. So very often buying those doesn't work out like folks thought it would. And the final thing is CDC guidelines. And we, we know that it makes sense for those stationary objects in, in your facilities, tabletops and door handles and so on like that. Those things have to be wiped down to be disinfected. 
And, you know, air supply is not going to do a whole lot with that. Zono is not going to do a whole lot with that. You need to, you need to do that with, with list in. EPA has list in chemicals and list in wipes to wipe down the, those surfaces. One other solution that I would, I would give you a little bit of caution about is the chemical foggers. Only six of those chemicals on list N, there are 560 chemicals listed on list N. Only six of those are approved to be sprayed or fogged. One of the things that we point out is you can't, you can't do this with children in the room and you have to allow a certain period of time for aerosol spray to dissipate before children are permitted into the room. And then the gap between when you fog uh, there are things going on. You're teaching, children are playing. Those things need to be dealt with and they get contaminated over the duration between gaps of, of doing fogging. So those are, the, those are the three things that we think that are, are verified technologies that you ought to consider using. Great. So yeah, the, to sum up the um, American Rescue Plan, there's different block grants coming through the states. Right now, somebody from Texas shared information about what she and her process is. Um, and every state obviously is different, but you can scan the QR code there or go to the link provided and find out more. And then work with uh, these fine folks at Zono Technologies to get um, information and access for having funding to get your very own Zono cabinet, combining it with the other um, air filters that um, Marvin presented and making it a great solution for your center going forward. And I thought that was very inf interesting information about the uh, what was on the masks in that study uh, as well. And I think the link to the study was is provided in the slides as well. So thank you so much for this very valuable information for all we can do to help parents and children and teachers feel more confident and keep uh, healthy and safe in our schools and in our centers. Thrilled that you guys reached out and let us know about this so we can let everybody in the industry know. And we're just so excited. Thank you so much for a great partnership. Thank you. And we'll see you at the summit.